And in this country, in the United States, people are not welcomed that way. They are separated and processed. They are detained and tortured. And we can't continue to allow that to happen. At least not under our watch. Budgets really are a statement, a statement of our moral values. And in this Congress, we cannot have a budget that does not further our values. We have a value of upholding human rights. We have a value of welcoming immigrants. We have a value of tolerance and acceptance. And we can't lose it today to a president and administration that is morally corrupt. This administration and this president are truly morally corrupt. Yes. They don't see people, they see dollars, they see campaigns, they see cheers, they see rallies. We see humans because most of us have been the invisible in our communities. We know what it means to jump out of policies and to recognize the faces behind them. And so that is what we are committed to doing here. This is going to be the Congress that sees beyond the policy, That's right. that sees the faces of the people. My sister Alexandria is correct, because when she says this president does not care for legal immigration, for him it is just a talking point. Mm. It's a dark whistle. Mm. It is something for him to say that allows for him to continue his detrimental policies that will morally bankrupt us. That's right. Because we know we know that he has a Muslim ban. Mm. We know that he is not, he is not interested in having families reunify legally. He's canceling the temporary statuses of thousands of Americans who have built a life here for 18, 20, 30 years, who no longer have a home outside of our borders. He also seems to never really understand what it means to seek asylum. Seeking asylum at a border is the most legal thing anyone can do. And that's what most of these people are doing. They're coming to our border asking for their human rights to be recognized to seek asylum. And we are welcoming them. We are welcoming them to torture, detention, to separation, and more pain or heartache. So today and every day until this nightmare ends, this stain of our country's history ends, we say, not under our watch. That's right! Not under our watch. So now I'm going to turn over to Anna, who has a, a family member, a friend, who's gone through this process, because it is necessary for us to continue to say the names, to see the faces, to center the people, who are truly go single day, even as a former immigration attorney, I would hear about at not access to medical care, all of the things that I think are so important. 
I grew up in probably one of the most diverse communities in Detroit, in Southwest Detroit, 20 different ethnicities. You know, after 2003, things changed. When ICE came, it was literally, it wasn't anything going on at the border. They were going through our neighborhoods, patrolling, actually having checkpoints at certain main streets, asking people for IDs, people running around our park, getting held up and saying, let me see your green card. ICE completely transformed my neighborhood that I grew up in into some sort of military zone. It hasn't made us safer. It actually put us more in jeopardy, more people afraid to speak up, more people afraid to reach out to people like myself and others for help. It actually has hurt us more. I don't know about you as a Muslim in America, as a child of immigrants, I don't want to wait for an apology because that's what's going to come because they're going to realize what they did was wrong. It was human rights violations. I'm tired of it. Just like our black Americans in this country are still waiting. That's right. And so I'm really tired of us sitting back and saying, well, we got to get the information. Guess what? We already know people died. That should be enough for us to act and to say that no more money towards an institution that is demonizing and criminalizing our immigrant neighbors. That's right. That's right. We don't want a system that basically has taken away the core values of the American dream. And I talk about this because when I came into this, you know, when I came um, with my mother in her womb, I remember my mother coming here and just, you know, imagining the opportunities for her daughter. Never, never could I imagine her having to go through what Jacqueline's mother is going through today. We love you. I just, and so not on our watch, not on our watch was as mothers, we will not allow children to die while we are in power here. We will not vote for any more DHS funding that hurts our children, hurts our immigrant neighbors. And I'll tell you, you know, I'm emotional about this because right before I got up here, Somebody from United, we dream told me about Manuel, who's 41, about my age, who has two children, Jefferson and Bryant, who's been in detention for a year away from his family. Why? Because he wants to live here, because he wants the same opportunities that anybody else would want. He's not a criminal. He shouldn't be treated that way. We have an immigration process that has been broken for three decades. Instead of trying to campaign on walls and things that are not going to bring this country together, we should be campaigning on how to fix our immigration system that brings people together. And so I want you to know what you do today. Don't think it doesn't matter. It will. Because you know what I'm telling you as an organizer has been talking about Medicare for all, talking about all this stuff. Now you have people in Congress that ran on that issue and won on that issue. So don't think when we run on abolishing ICE or running on defunding ICE that criminalizes our immigrant neighbors, criminalizes any person of color, to be honest. I have seen it over and over again that ICE stops people in my community. They literally take parents in front of schools in my community, and I've seen it firsthand as a state representative, and now as a congresswoman, I hear it from my residents. And so I want Manuel to know as he's sitting in a detention center that he should be proud because today his son is here to speak for him. And Jefferson, I don't know where you're at. Jefferson, you tell your father there are incredible women in Congress now that understand what it means to be a parent, that understands what it means when every single day he's away from you. And so just know we're going to have so much courage. Thank you for giving him a voice. Thank you for being here. And with that, I want to hear from this man, this young boy that probably right now, all he wants is his father to be back. A man that would never, ever, ever, ever hurt anybody and should not be treated as some sort of criminal. Thank you so much, Jefferson, for being here. Thank you so much for your courage. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm on behalf of here of my father. Manuel Armando Arpi. He is an Ecuadorian immigrant and he has only did good for my family.